Hi, and welcome to this presentation. I'm Jordan Splice, and I'll be presenting um, a workshop today called Biggest Bang for the Buck, Using Data to Target Communities of Highest Need with Teen Pregnancy Prevention Programs. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how um, my organization, which is a statewide nonprofit, uses Tableau to target communities of highest need um, with the ability to have the highest effect on the teen pregnancy prevention or teen pregnancy in our state. So a little bit about me, I'm Jordan Slice. I'm the Research and Evaluation Associate at the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy. Um, I graduated from the, the University of South Carolina, and I've been with the South Carolina Campaign for almost three years now. And in my role at the South Carolina Campaign, I manage and analyze data from clinics and other organizations implementing teen pregnancy prevention programs, and I analyze state and county level teen birth data. And the reason we track teen birth data is it's an indicator of teen pregnancy and its effect on our state. So we track the rate because it's a proportion of the number of births to the population, and we use that as a per 1,000 rate. And when we say teen, we mean 15 and 19 year olds. And another fun fact about me is that I love to rescue black dogs. I actually have three. So today's objectives for the presentation. I'm going to start out by telling you a little bit about the South Carolina campaign and what our organization actually does. I'm going to go over how we use Tableau at the South Carolina campaign. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the challenges that we've experienced, particularly in a small nonprofit setting. And I'm going to tell you some of the strategies that I've come up with for addressing these challenges. And last, I'm going to share some ideas for communicating data specifically in a small nonprofit setting. So about the South Carolina campaign. We're a statewide nonprofit. Uh, we work with organizations on the ground who are working with youth to um, provide funding and technical assistance and support who are implementing pregnancy prevention programs with these youth. And our main office is in Columbia, South Carolina, which is in the central part of the state. And we also have two small satellite offices, one in the upstate, which is in Spartanburg County, and one in the lower part of our state in Horry County. And we have about 30 employees, so we're pretty small. So here you can see some of the beliefs of the South Carolina campaign. We believe that the prevention of teen pregnancy is in the best interest of adolescents, their families, and their communities. And we believe that parents should be equipped to be the primary educators of their children about love, sex, and relationships. And we believe that the most effective help and sexuality education is age appropriate and medically accurate. We also believe in the use of research proven curricula and programs that will reduce teen pregnancy. We also believe in partnering with all sectors of the community to implement effective strategies to reduce teen pregnancy. And we're going to talk in a minute about some of the agencies that we partner with and in which settings they're targeting youth. Here you can see the goals of the South Carolina campaign. We believe that high quality teen pregnancy prevention programs should be available to South Carolina youth, especially high priority youth. And we believe that public schools should be delivering age appropriate science based teen pregnancy prevention programs. And we believe that young people who are sexually active should have access to condoms and other forms of contraception, which speaks to some of the work I'm going to talk about later with clinics and tracking contraceptive patterns of these youth and making these services more readily available. We also believe that parents and trusted adults should be having honest and open conversations with their children about love, sex, and relationships. So who do we work with? We partner with organizations who work with youth on the ground in many different settings. So what are these settings? We partner with organizations in an academic setting, including K-12 and colleges. We work with clinical partners and hospitals and clinics to provide services to these youth. And we also work with community-based organizations like the Boys and Girls Club. We work with the faith community, and we have several research-proven curricula that um, are appropriate for the faith community and that they use for this particular setting. And we also work with families. We work with parents and other adults so that they can um, feel comfortable having these conversations with their youth. 
So the South Carolina campaign, we don't actually provide direct service. Um, we don't provide services on a day-to-day -day basis to youth. We work with organizations who work with the youth. We provide funding and support to these organizations to use evidence-based programs to target these youth. And when I say evidence-based programs, I mean programs that have been proven through research to have an effect on teen pregnancy. So how do we discover Tableau? Here you can see it's a little cluttered, which is kind of the point. Um, this is a static handout that we've used in the past. Uh, we, use, we have used this handout and developed it through the use of Excel. So we kind of forced Excel to come up with these tables that then created these graphs. And as you can see on the left side um, is caseload data. This first chart, you might actually have a hard time seeing the purple and green pie represents the proportion of male, which are in green, and female patients. This is all adolescent patients at one particular clinic that we partner with. The graph under it um, has our caseload data broken out by age. So we filter, we have under 15 in that light blue sliver. We have 15 to 17 in that medium blue, and 18 to 19 year old youth in that darker blue. And in the bottom graph on the left, we have the caseload broken out by race. Our main focus in this dashboard is actually on the right side here. You can see this is the contraceptive continuum right here with the different colors. Uh, we have the lower effective, the least effective methods at the top, and the more reliable methods at the bottom. So our, our goal is to move patients down this spectrum. And the reason I tell you all this is we've actually received a grant through the Centers for Disease Control to reduce the incidence of teen pregnancy in two counties in South Carolina. And I kind of hinted on it earlier when I told you all about the two offices that we have. We have um, a satellite office in the upper part of the state and the lower part of the state. Uh, we received funding to work in these two counties, Ori and Spartanburg. And so we partner with clinics in these counties to work at increasing the availability of services to youth, particularly sexually active youth. So how we use Tableau now and what our new dashboards look like. We've recreated these dashboards with the same uh, data, but they have a much different feel and a much different look in Tableau. Here you can see we have the caseload data on the left. We have female adolescent patients under 20 years old, and we have it broken out by race across the bottom. We also have on the right, we have the contraceptive methods, and we've pulled out two particular methods these long-acting reversible contraceptive methods, these are those highly reliable at the bottom of the continuum, which is our ultimate goal with moving teams towards. Um, with IUDs, they can stay in for up to 10 years. And with implants, which is a subdermal implant implanted into the arm, can prevent pregnancy for up to three years. And we call these highly reliable because they really eliminate a lot of human error, and they take away from teams having to take a pill every day or different methods that are, require a lot strenuous, <laughs> rigorous um, use. And we call them reversible because at any time, the teens can go to the clinic and have them removed. We also can use this to target, um, to filter, sorry, to filter by county. Like I said earlier, we have the two counties that we work in, Ori and Spartanburg. These two counties are very different. They're very different parts of the state. They have a much different culture in each. And so we treat them separately when we're looking at their data. And we really, um, we have much different efforts on the ground there as well. So it's important that we're able to look at this data broken out by county. We're also able to filter by methods. So if someone were interested in looking at um, who was on the other end of the spectrum, so who is not on any method or who is on one of the lower reliable methods, we can also do this in this one screen in Tableau without having to even go back to our database. And we're also able to filter by age, which is really important for us. Um, previously, we've only looked at the data for all adolescents under 20. And in Tableau, we're able to easily break out this data. We saw earlier that um, a wide majority of our patients are in the older age range, but it's really important that we get those older teens um, into the clinic and that we're providing services, especially to those teens who are sexually active. Uh, we know in South Carolina that 72% of all births to teens are to those older teens in the 18 to 19 year old age range. So it's important that these teens have access to services.
I'm going to show you another example of how we use Tableau. I'm going to bring it up right here. You can see a dashboard that I've created here. Um, the cool feature about Tableau 8.0 is that you're able to create word clouds. And what I've done here is use the word cloud to connect with the scatter plot. The scatter plot is kind of an old idea in our organization. We've used the scatter plot for many years to target different communities. And what it shows on the scatter plot and how we use it is it separates the counties by risk. So we have these counties that are above this horizontal line, which is the South Carolina teen birth rate in 2011. So you can see across that line, those above that had a higher birth rate in the state. And we also have this vertical line that adds another separation, and it's the average number of births per county. So it separates. So this top right quadrant are counties that are at highest risk. They have both a high teen birth rate as well as a high number of births. So these counties are really used to target with our efforts, and we want to make sure that we're raising awareness in these communities and importance for teen pregnancy prevention. Most recently, we've actually used this quadrant to um, indicate who we should give scholarships to. We received a pot of funding for a national conference, and we wanted to give those scholarships out to partners that we partner with in our communities. So we had them apply, and partners who were working with youth in these high-risk communities, these counties in this top right quadrant, were given preferential treatment with receiving the scholarship. We also use it when, it, when we open funding um, throughout the years, and we have people apply for grants in the community. We always give priority to counties who are, um, to organizations who are working in these high-priority counties. So one way that we use this um, particular dashboard is that we're able to go into this word cloud, find our county, and you can see you can hover over it. The hover feature for Tableau is able to show you, um, without leaving the screen, the number of births and the teen birth rate for that county. So if we wanted to look at Spartanburg, which is one of our counties that we talked about earlier that were funded um, through the Center for Disease Control to reduce the impact of teen pregnancy in that county, we're also funded in ORI. So if we hold down control and select ORI at the top, we're able to view these two counties and where they're at on the scatter plot in comparison to each other at the same time without leaving this particular screen. So it's really a useful feature for us with being able to target different communities. We've also used the scatter plot um, to target communities with events to raise awareness. Uh, once a year in May, throughout the month of May, we set off on a road show, and our staff goes out in the community in honor of Teen Pregnancy Prevention Month to raise awareness for the importance of teen pregnancy prevention programs. And we really target these communities in this high-risk quadrant to raise awareness about what our organization does and how they can partner with us to implement programs. Another way we've used Tableau is with this map. And you can see here we have different, different sites mapped on the map of South Carolina. And these are sites who had a funding relationship with us during the last fiscal year. So we've broken these out by site type. So we're able to, in this screen, separate by the type of site that we work with. So if we wanted to look at CBOs, which are community-based organizations like the Boys and Girls Club or Parks and Recreation, we're able to filter and just pull those forward and see exactly where those are located in our state. And we can do the same thing with clinics that we partner with. And you can see here in the upper part of the state, these are clinics that work with us on that CDC-funded project that we talked about earlier. And we also have some clinics down in the low country who are also partnering on that clinic or on that grant. One challenge that we've had with this particular map was how do we define a partner? Right now, we're dependent on a list that we get through our financial department. Um, these are much in a much more organized fashion for financial purposes. So we rely right now on displaying the data that's collected on that end for who has an actual funding relationship with us. We have many relationships out in the community with organizations who are not funded, who we may have done events with, or we have an ongoing relationship that could potentially develop into a funded relationship later. 
and those guys are not tracked in quite the same fashion. So we're going to use this in the future as a ploy to our different departments to come up with a better system for tracking these unfunded relationships. We can also use the SNAP and how it has been used internally is to target different communities. If we have areas of the state where we really don't have a lot going on, we're able to kind of prioritize these areas where we may need to raise awareness and build relationships with those sites in those areas. So as you can imagine, being a small nonprofit, we've faced a lot of challenges with using Tableau, but we've been able to come up with a lot of really good solutions for how to use Tableau, particularly in a small nonprofit setting. So now I'm going to spend a little time going through this with everyone. So the first challenge is that much of our data is collected externally. We rely heavily on other organizations to report or share data with us, um, whether these are partnering sites on um, who receive funding from us, who have to um, fulfill grant requirements and send us certain data like pre and post surveys and different um, tracking data. We also rely on publicly available data that's collected at the state level. So that comes with some limitations. And the solution that we've come up with, since we have a lot less control over this data since it's collected externally, is that we have to be patient with our sites. And we have to communicate often, especially with those funded sites. We communicate internally with our technical assistance team, who's really the team that's communicating most often and is the contact person for those funded sites. So they're providing the support to those sites, and they'll be the first to know if these sites are having difficulty collecting data. So we're able to keep that open line of communication internally so that if support's needed for collecting the data, we're able to jump in and provide that when necessary. It also keeps us in the loop of when we can expect data and what kind of problems we can have that we can solve in our databases later for those communities. Another challenge that we're facing is because this data comes in so many different um, sources from such a variety of sites, there's a lot of cleaning required. And so we really have to pay a lot of attention and build that into our timeline um, to allow us time to clean this data and really combine it in a way that's meaningful and that we can use in Tableau. So the solution is to be realistic with timelines. We communicate with our internal team regularly who then communicates um, with our sites as needed to let them know when this data is going to be available. So we're realistic about the time frame of when we can turn around data, especially with all the cleaning that's required. So another challenge that we face is that no matter how often and how hard we try to avoid it, hand entry is often required. And as you all know, with hand entry comes a lot of human error, and we really have to be careful with that. Um, one example of how we have to rely on hand entry of the data is that our state's Title X clinics, who are those family planning clinics that we rely on the caseload and contraceptive data for, is tracking a system that's only able to export as a PDF. So this really forces us to hand enter all of the data for all of the different sites that we have. And through the system, what we have to do is we have to individually print each clinic's um, page and then enter it into a database that we've developed. So to alleviate some of this burden, what we've done is I've built a functional database that mirrors the form that's spit out through the Title X system. So it really looks identical to what's spit out through the system, so it doesn't require us to move the data around a lot when we're entering it. So what we then do is we hand enter it through the system, and then it spits out the dashboard that I showed you all earlier. And then we often have to take this data and reformat it to feed into Tableau in a way that it can read. So what we do with that to avoid the human error and reporting unreliable data so we always build in time to check the data. It's very important that we sit with the data and we go through all the different filters, especially when we're using Tableau, and we check each individual data point. Sometimes we're able to build a system into Excel so that it's able to do a checking process electronically, but then we also sometimes just have to sit with the, with the printed PDF and check from the original data source into our filters in Tableau to make sure 
but all the data that we're reporting is reliable. Another challenge that we face is that our team really has a desire for static data. Uh, we really like handouts. So, as you all know, with Tableau, as soon as it's printed, it really loses a lot of its value. Um, the good thing about Tableau is that you're able to really interact with the data. But many members of our team aren't used to this style of presentation, especially when it comes to data. So one of the solutions that I've come up with is that every opportunity I get, I take to present in Tableau. Anytime I'm, I'm able to present data with our staff, I do it in Tableau as often as possible. So I, I, my goal with that is to get them used to using Tableau and seeing this data in a more interactive fashion so that they're able to then get more comfortable with this interactivity and ultimately have Tableau Reader on their desktop. And then they're able, hopefully one day, to sit at their desk and interact with the data to inform decision making. So through our use of Tableau in our small nonprofit setting, we've come up with some promising practices. And I'd like to share those with you now. I'm going to open Tableau. First that we have is to keep it simple. I really like that Tableau automatically eliminates any clutter. And I really had to force it to add these labels back on, on this right side over here, which is actually a good thing. It really eliminates clutter, which can really distract your viewer. And um, what's, your, what's your ultimate goal is for them to be able to focus on the data. So you want to eliminate as much clutter as possible. And you can see here, we're able to filter on the side. We can select certain counties. So if we just want to look at Ori's trend, we can. And the same thing with Spartanburg and also with the state. And what we're showing here is the team birth rate over time, which is something that we've looked at for many years in our organization. And we've only recently, through the use of Tableau, been able to do this in a more interactive fashion. So this shows the team birth rate trend over time for the state and these two counties that we work in. And one thing that's interesting is that we applied for funding from the Centers for Disease Control to work in these two communities in 2009. You can see the rates here. We had to use 2008 data. So in both counties had a higher birth rate, teen birth rate, than the state. You can see here, Ori's at 53.5, and Spartanburg had a rate of 63.3, which is higher than the state's rate of 53. So we were able to kind of compare over time that these counties were above the state rate. And we were able to show that there was that these were communities of high need that we would be able to have a high impact with. Moving forward, we'll be able to use Tableau to inform these decisions and we'll be able to interact with different communities. So as you can see on the side, we have all the counties listed. So if we were interested in looking at different counties, we could also add them to this graph and take away different counties to be able to compare across time. Another promising practice is to use color intentionally. I use the red-green color screen quite often when I'm looking at team birth data, just because I want, I want my audience to quickly interpret whether it's good or bad, whether the county is doing well or if, if they're not doing so well, which is usually indicated with the red. So as you can see here, each point is over a zip code area in South Carolina. And the red corresponds with those with a higher teen birth rate than the state, whereas the green shows those that are below. And you can see that these dots are different sizes. And the size corresponds to the number of births. So you can see with the bigger dot, these are areas that have had a high number of births to teens. Whereas the smaller ones have a smaller number of births. And we really use this graph internally to target different communities. So we're able to sort of see the concentration of births in different areas of our state. And we're able to quickly see whether these um, zip code areas are at high risk, those that are large and red. And we can quickly see those that are in green. So as you can see here, we have a large red dot. This zip code area 29203 is in the Columbia area. And being that it's red, it has a high, 
higher teen birth rate than the state in 2011, and also a high number of births. So we know proportionately with the rate that teens are disproportionately affected in this community. So this will be a community that we would want to target with our efforts. Another promising practice is to go with familiarity. Bar charts are always a safe bet. You're able to easily compare length rather than area, like in a pie chart. So the bar graph, you're able to quickly compare, and it takes, um, it takes down on the time it takes for someone to interpret your data, which is important. They're able to more quickly understand what you're saying. So here you can see that the counties are ranked by the number of births. And in Tableau, the default is to rank the counties alphabetically. And it makes a lot less sense here to have them ranked alphabetically, whereas it makes more sense to have them ranked by the number of births so that we're able to easily compare that Greenville has a higher number of births and Lawrence County down here at the bottom has a lower number of births. And another thing to note is that we filtered these counties to only be those who had a higher than average number of births in their county. And we can use this to target communities that have a high number of births, so we'd be able to reach a high number of teens in these communities, which is important. And our last promising practice to share is to cater to your audience. As I stated earlier, I really enjoy these word clouds that Tableau 8.0 is allowing us to make now. It really takes our data to a whole new level and allows people who aren't data-minded, who may be a little less comfortable with us showing a bunch of charts to, they may be more comfortable looking at something like a word cloud with, a, with all of the counties listed. So what I've done here is all the counties in South Carolina are listed in the word cloud. And then you can hover over each one to see the data points. And also, just like before, I kept the same color scheme that I've been using, with the green being those with the lower birth rate than the state, and those in red with a higher teen birth rate than the state. And the size corresponds to the number of teen births. So it's the same, it's showing the same general idea as some of the other charts that I've shared, but the data point is the word. So you can click on each county here and sort of filter just to look at each county. And this is a chart that I would use if we were going into the community to present to a community-based organization or people on the ground who may not be as well equipped to look at bar graphs and charts as the rest of my um, internal research and evaluation team may be. So I hope that you found these promising practices helpful. And if you have any questions in the future about how the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy is using Tableau or any of our efforts, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My contact information is shown here. And again, I'm Jordan Slice, and I'm the Research and Evaluation Associate at the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy.